out of all the Middle Eastern fragrances I've tried, these are the ones I'd recommend the least. I love talking about all kinds of different fragrances on this channel, from really affordable ones to really high-end fragrances. And I talk a lot about Middle Eastern fragrances because I find that the pricing and the quality of a lot of Middle Eastern fragrances is pretty amazing and I specifically love recommending them because if you are someone who don't don't like doesn't have a lot of money to spend on fragrances but you still want to smell good you can do that by choosing some really top-notch Middle Eastern fragrances so as a result I've tried a lot I blind bought the majority of my Middle Eastern collection so I have managed to smell a lot and accumulate fragrances and thus have a very discerning nose when it comes to the ones I'd recommend more versus less. And a lot of these fragrances I have recommended in the past, but now I wouldn't recommend them as much or I'd recommend them the least. And I'm going to be very clear with you about which fragrances I think would be would be better suited towards what kind of person. I am first going to start out with this one right here. This is Velvet Oud by La Tapa. This is a very intense leather fragrance. I believe there's also lapinum here, but the reason why I recommend it the least is because the leather here is very animalic. It smells almost synthetic. It's kind of like a leather armchair. That's what I get whenever I smell this. It's not the best leather I've ever smelled. I don't think it's the greatest. It's very traditionally masculine, but there's something about this fragrance, like there's, there's a sweetness to it that kind of makes me feel like a little bit nostalgic. I do find myself drawn to it, which is why I haven't discontinued it, or not discontinued it. I haven't decluttered it yet because I like smelling it. I don't know how to wear it, because it's a very strong fragrance and there's it has presence to it but like it's just not one that I'd prefer to wear but I do like smelling it so if you're interested in that kind of leather if you're okay with it this might be one to try but this is not the top leather I'd recommend I think there are a lot better leathers out there so this is definitely not one of them in my opinion if I had to be super discerning next up is Yara Tous now I recommended this quite a lot last year and I still think it's a pretty scent but to me right now, it's very soapy. It's very soapy, almost shampoo-like. That's not a scent profile I prefer right now, um, and that's why this is not a fragrance I'd recommend as much. There are other more affordable mangoes, or there are other affordable mangoes that I think are just as good, if not better. Um, this, to me, smells like almost, like a, almost green mango, but very soapy and shampoo-y. So it's nice. There's... There's definitely nothing wrong with this scent. It's just not a scent profile I choose anymore as or as much as I did last year. It's just not a fragrance I've worn in a long time because I'm just not interested in like soapy fragrances at the moment. Um, it's not my favorite mango. I think there are better ones out there, but if you're into soapy fragrances, this might be one to try. This next one is interesting because the reason why I don't like it is because of other people's experiences whenever, whenever I spray this on. And let me explain. So this is Al Hermain's Amber Oud Gold Edition. This is a super fruity oud fragrance. It's very strong. This is Beast Mode. It's strong. I wore three, five sprays of this when I was um, working retail when I first got this fragrance, and people really hated it. People just were getting reactions they were not they were not pleased it was just it was just an awkward situation by the way there's also a really strong patchouli in here which i do think contributes to the everlasting beast mode powder that this has um this is a fragrance that yes people had a very strong negative reaction to it and to be honest i don't want to be walking around and have people say that they they are getting a headache because of this fragrance and that's why I haven't worn it really that much since um but whenever I share this with other fragrance lovers they tend to like it um but this is a fragrance I'd recommend the least because you have to really like strong fragrances to appreciate this one because this is one of the strongest ones I've smelled so it's great value um it'll last you a long time I have a two ounce bottle. I was considering getting a bigger one. I'm so glad I did not <laughs> because this is strong. Um, but yeah, I haven't worn it that much since. It's not one, the one I'd recommend the most. So there you go. Um, another one that 
I'm just not a fan of is also by Al Haramein. This is Lavenshore Parfum. This is one that, to be honest with you, I love the smell of this. I love the smell of the juice. This is kind of like, it's like dull, like canned dull pineapples. That's what I get whenever I smell this. It also has, I think, a green apple note, which I really like. It's just like a fun, fruity, punch kind of scent. I like it a lot. The thing that I don't like about this fragrance is the packaging. It just looks like bad. It looks very cheap in my opinion. Um, it's just not my favorite. And I just, the experience that I have whenever I wear this is not necessarily the most positive one because of the bottle. It just literally, it's literally plastic and I'm not, I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. There are other Middle Eastern packagings that I like more. Their bottle designs are genuinely like nicer. And, um, this is like, I think I bought it for $45 and that makes it, I mean, there are some perfumes out there that are Middle Eastern perfumes that are $20 and have better bottles than this. This is literally plastic and because of that, I don't wear this a lot because I just don't have a positive experience whenever I'm using this. So yes, I'd recommend it the least because of the packaging, but the juice I really do love. Next up is one that I kind of feel a little bit odd about putting in this video, but I'm going to give you my disclaimer as to why it's in here. This is Oud Mood by Latafa. And whenever I smell it, to be honest, it smells like Christmas time. It's an Oud Patchouli Rose scent, um, like your Oud Rose combo with pimento, um, caramel, cinnamon. It's a beautiful fragrance. It does smell like Christmas to me. The bottle's lovely. The cap's nice and weighted. This will cost you around $20. Um, I do wish I had gotten the smaller size because this is a bit of a stronger fragrance. And to my nose, sometimes the cinnamon here is a bit scratchy, but I do like the way this smells. But whenever I wear this, I don't over spray. I literally just do like one or two sprays and that's it for me. It's just not my favorite scent anymore. I used to really love this when I first got into Middle Eastern perfumes. Now I don't wear it as much and I think that's why I'm putting it in this video because is it like my favorite Middle Eastern perfume of all time? No, I think it's I think it's good. I still recommend it. I think it's great. Like I think it's great if you're interested in that scent profile. But this is just kind of like a situation of been there, done that. Not really interested in this scent profile anymore. Even though the fragrance is quite nice. So if you're interested in how this smells, think Christmassy. That's pretty much that's pretty much like a super very simple way of putting it. Think Christmassy and you'll pretty much get a good idea of how this fragrance smells. I really do like it. Is it one that I would wear anymore? Probably not, but there you go. This next one, I feel guilty about putting it in here because I still get comments about people saying how much they really are happy that I recommended this to them because they really, really love it. And I'm putting it in this video because, to be honest, me right now, because I've been making fragrance videos for like, I think, two two years um, on TikTok and on here. And when I first started making fragrance videos, I was talking about this perfume a lot. Uh, because at that time, I really, really loved it. It's a really pretty, resinous, sugary perfume with a bit of oud. It's very sweet, it's cozy, it smells like, it smells, I would say it smells pretty photorealistic. It, it's not, it's not a fragrance that I would discount right now. It's still a good one, but there are other perfumes that smell similar that I like more. For example, I mean, I've introduced myself to Unwi Nomad, which has sugar leather, which is a bottle I have in my collection. And that kind of has like a similar sugary, caramelized gourmand scent with leather, but that one is just done in a very smooth, like a much smoother way. And yes, that is a fragrance that is a hundred plus dollars. This is 20. You kind of see what I mean? Like at some point, like, yes, you do pay for quality, but if you're looking for an affordable sugared, like kind of cozy vanilla gourmand perfume, this is really, really pretty, but it's just not a fragrance that I would readily recommend anymore. Just not even based off of price alone, just based off of scent profile, but based on price, I would still recommend it if you're looking for something that's super affordable that has the scent profile because it is quite nice. It's just not my like top favorite anymore. 
and that's just me being honest about taste changing. I do think it's important to do that, especially um, as we start like smelling even more things and refining our taste. Um, because at one point I was obsessed with this and I do think it's, it's still a really solid, a solid recommendation, but it's just not one that I would make as much right now. So there you go. Another one that I used to really, really love and recommend is Opulent Musk. This is one that I still really like. It's a very strong citrusy, not, I mean, you don't get the citrusy in the opening, but there's like a slight citrus, slight, slight citrus. But what you get is like a really like just you know, intense saffron, um, and this fragrance smells vaguely like Baccarat Rouge with, uh, with musk. It has, like, that cloud-like effect. It's really, really pretty. That's my interpretation of it, but I have found that a lot of people think that this fragrance smells like kind of like burnt rubber, burnt plastic, um, and I would say that's the majority of people that try this scent. I personally do not have that negative experience. I think this is a really pretty scent. I really like it a lot. Uh, but I feel guilty recommending it because I don't want you spending money on something that's so polarizing. Uh, because I really do think it's a matter of interpretation. Some people will smell this and they will really like it. Others will smell it and they'll think, why am I smelling this? This smells bad. So as a result, I don't recommend this fragrance as much and I don't even really talk about it that much because I don't want to recommend a fragrance for you that you might really dislike. Um, and with this, it's literally just about the interpretation because some people interpret this as smelling really bad, others interpret it as smelling excellent. This is a very potent fragrance as well, so if you're looking for a fragrance that has terrific lasting power, this is one to try. But keep in mind, this can be a very polarizing scent, so maybe get a decant, I don't know, but this is one I don't recommend as much anymore for that reason. But those are all the fragrances I want to talk about today. I think this is just a testament of how tastes can change once we smell more and more things and experiment with more fragrances and simply just change the fragrances we wear on a regular basis. A lot of these scents make me feel really nostalgic because I remember when I was first getting into perfumes, just loving these fragrances. But what I like about Middle Eastern perfumes in particular is how accessible they are because I was wearing these fragrances when I was working retail and realistically it's like, it's not the best idea to have a large fragrance collection when you're working part time in a retail position. I mean, let's be honest, you know what I mean? But with these Middle Eastern fragrances, I was all of a sudden able to have some really like lasting, like strong lasting power fragrances in my collection that had interesting notes that were new to me, all for a fraction of the price of what, what, what a designer or a niche bottle would be. And I think that's a wonderful thing and that's why I continue making uh, videos like these about Middle Eastern perfumes because I think they're accessible and that's the thing that we should be talking about more in the fragrance space and we're doing that and I think that's lovely but the main reason why I talk about Middle Eastern perfumes and I mean I talk about I try to talk about like all different kinds but I uh, really like talking about Middle Eastern perfumes because of how accessible they are and the quality is not compromised by the price usually um but if you're interested in seeing my recommendations for Middle Eastern scents, I have a ton of videos on them. Just go on my channel, watch a few. Um, I try a lot of different ones and I buy a lot of them on a regular basis so I can review them and test them out for you. So with that being said, I hope this video was useful and provided you with some insight. Thank you so much for watching till the end and I will see you next time. Bye.